So let's go and have a look at where the mine workers would have used this drilling machine. A tunnel development end. So once the mine geologists have established where the ore bodies are, they will plan how they will get to it. First, they sink a shaft and then develop in that direction, slightly uphill on an upgrade to allow any water to run away from the face and makes it easier for the mine workers to push the cocoa pants away from the face as well. Then the survey department will show the mining team the lines. Can you shine your names here? The, the line on the roof or hanging on is a direction line. And then on the side walls, these are great lines. So when you look on the rock face, the red markings, that's where it indicates to a driller where he drills blasting holes. So that's when they would have used the drill that we just saw. They usually drill a meter. So after drilling a meter, then they wash out with water and compress air. And then the blaster pack those holes fully with explosives. And then at the end of a shift, everybody goes out to the surface. Then the blaster set his chargers and he also goes out. And then all the dynamite explode. Re-entry period of six hours while waiting for the ventilation system to remove the dust. So when the next shift starts, it starts by clearing the broken rock. It was called head lashing in the olden days. Putting the rocks into the cocoa pans and pushing it back to the shaft to be hoisted to the surface. Right. How long were the shifts? Eight hours. Ah, uh, okay. The shift were eight hours. And then in that eight hours, you go only a meter yeah, with the tunnel. Because before they had the drilling machines underground, they were using hammers and chisels oh. to chip a one meter hole, and it took eight hours. It runs in a 35 degree angle, right? So this tunnel, it is called a reef drive or a reef intersection. It is a tunnel that was blasted alongside the gold reef itself. Oh. And that's this rock here. Right. So going all the way like that. Right. So that's a vein or a seam, right? You mine a lot of rock to produce a relatively small amount of gold. Yeah. So just to let you know how much rock had to be removed, this gold reef, it has a grade of only four grams of gold in a ton. Oh, come on. Right? For eight hours labor a day for that. <laughs> a ton, uh, uh, four grams is the size of this button. You see this button? In a ton of rock. So which means roughly, sorry, which means roughly eight. Eight uh, cocoa pens, eight tons, will only produce an ounce. Oh my word. What kind of salaries did the workers have? Right. We had skilled. Right. Can you take one step at the back, one step closer to me? Unskilled and skilled laborers, right? Skilled laborers were paid 1,100 rands per month. Skilled and unskilled laborers were paid 87 rands. Per month. Oh, ma. but then how many? 1886? That, that was in 1946. Oh. 1946. And that's for eight hours? That's for eight hours. A day? A, a month. A month. Yeah, but, for, day, yeah, but I mean for eight hours, hours day. every day. Yes. Oh, nice. Seven days a week? Seven days a week. Marvelous. Wow. <laughs> right. Mm. The cross cut tunnels, they run from east to west. But the Gold Reef, it runs from north to south. And it runs more or less at an angle of 35 degrees. So the mine workers will mine from the level below to the level above, following the 35 degree angle, like they did here. Come and have a look. So obviously, when you are mining and you are continuously removing rock, then there's a constant danger of rock falls, like the one we saw earlier on. So what the mine workers had to do, they support the hanging wall by installing these wooden supports. And they mostly use eucalyptus. And eucalyptus back then was imported from Australia. Oh. Right. So how do the mine workers dig these big holes here? Step number one. Mm. Let's move further on here. Big question. 
and develop the tunnels that gets you to the gold reef. You, you, you develop a small tunnel like this one called a race directly into the goal itself. And it goes all the way up towards the tunnel on the level above. Then you drill holes, right? You drill holes, one meter, then you put the dynamite. Then you blast sideways. So you run from right to left or east to west. You're gonna enlarge this original tunnel into a very, very big hole, like this one here. So here, we have various methods of support. The single wooden poles are called the sprugs, and they are only temporary support. They were put here to protect the mine workers working up the stove. And then, when you shine your lamps up there, we've got bigger structures that are properly packed. That's a skeleton pack, and that's a permanent roof support. Another method of support in use is a bolt. So this bolt is basically a big roll bolt. Right. There's one here. So all this roof board, this is how deep this roof board are in the rock. So what the man workers would do, they would drill 90 degrees and then insert the roof board and then tighten. As you tighten, the end inside splits. So it wedges itself against the rock. And a single bolt supports 10 tons. What's it made of? Iron. Yeah, steel, yes. Steel. Right, then, uh, as I said earlier on, that due to a lack of methane gas underground, it was easy to use candles underground. So this is, the mine workers would be working down here in conditions like this, all right? So, for a demonstration, I would like to introduce to you Abel. Abel, how are you? Okay. <laughs> uh, please don't shine your lamps Sorry. on his face. Right. So what Abel will be demonstrating is, is chipping a hole using only a hammer and a moil. A moil is an earlier version of a chisel. <laughs> right. Eight hours. One meter. Yeah. In 1935, this Jack Hammer drilling machine was introduced down the mine, right? So now we are going to demonstrate the drilling machine, and it makes such a very, very loud noise, right? It makes such a very, very loud noise. You might want to cover your, your ears. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, thank you. So now, Using this drilling machine, your eight hours have been reduced to three minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, but you've gone deep yeah. in the process. Yeah. Yeah. So that means modern mines, they issue mine workers earplugs to prevent damage to or their ears. So the noise that you hear, it comes from the air pressure used to drive the, the drill bit. However, Mark, please shine you. your light up there for me, please. No, this oh, side. Sorry, yeah. The mine in the late 1920s. So this obviously eliminated the need for men to manhandle the cocoa pens anymore. And it brought size of relief to every mule south of the equator. <laughs> mm. right. So with this locomotive you can pull about 10, almost the same as the mules, 10 cocoa pens. So, so this display will clearly shows you how deep is the mine, how many levels is in this mine, how many shafts, and where we are here.